Hello everyone and welcome to this really cool quick start tutorial where I'm going to be running you through how to get your project into the Steam VR template in Stingray. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to do first is go into the template. Um, and this is the project uh, manager. And now I'm just going to go ahead and select this HTC Vive uh, template. And we're going to go ahead and hit create and give it a name. So I'm going to call this quick start VR. And I'm going to just put that into a folder on my desktop, which I've already created. So VR Quick Start, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Select Folder, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that project. Okay, so there it goes. Now once it compiles, we'll be all set to get started. Okay, now that we're started, uh, what we wanna do is go ahead and kind of circumnavigate this, uh, this standard template that it comes with. Um, the whole point of this is to be able to kind of bring in your own assets and get your own project started. And I'm going to give you the basics on how to do that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and create our own level. So let's go ahead and go new level and then let's go file, save level as, and we're just going to call it garage. Okay. Uh, Cause I'm working on a garage here. Okay. So garage. And now what we need to do is tell our script in the, uh, the Lua folder. So I'm going to script Lua and I'm going to grab this project file. And what I want to do is where it says uh, this default level under line 12, uh, we're going to change that to garage. Okay. G A R A G E. And that just um, follows the same exact name as whatever we named our uh, new level. Okay. And what that'll allow is that when we hit this play button, um, it's going to go ahead and use this uh, level for the default. Level. Okay. So it won't, automatically jump you into the other project. Instead, it's gonna launch you to your project, okay? So this is really important and you wanna make sure you do this. So that's really all you need. And we're gonna go ahead and close this and we're set, okay? So now what we wanna do is start getting some content into this, uh, into this project. So let's go into our quick start VR. So I'm back at the root and I'm gonna go content and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this garage, okay? And this is just good practice to keep your stuff isolated from all the other stuff that's in here, okay? So inside of garage, we're gonna go ahead and create our necessary content. So the first one is gonna be the building. And let's go ahead and import that building now. So I've gone into the building folder and I'm gonna go import. And inside the um, goodies folder that's included with the package, uh, that came with this project, uh, we can go into assets and we can grab the garage underscore modern and go into game ready and just select this garage.fbx. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and it'll go ahead and import everything as we need it, okay? Now this, um, this file I had set up with all the RMA materials already applied and I have other tutorials on how to do that. Um, but yeah, you're gonna see that this, this file is gonna come in basically 100%. Uh, there's going to be a few little pieces of setup that we have to do, but for the most part, all the textures are in place, all the models are in place, everything's kind of in place. Um, and we just need to now make this setup for uh, VR so that it works really good so that we can teleport around and do what we want. Okay, so now that it's imported, let's just go ahead and place that asset. So let's place it and let's set it at the zero, zero, zero. So zero, zero, and zero. Okay, so I just did that in the translate. And now I wanna make sure that right now it's still in the place mode. So I wanna get off of place mode. Okay, so now I've got my asset and it's here in the level and uh, it's looking pretty sharp. Okay, now the next thing, I personally don't like to see the grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit G to get rid of the grid. And now I can just see my, uh, my asset. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the asset, which it's actually done already. If you hit Alt D, you can deselect the asset, but as you can see, it's a little greener. So that means that it's selected. And I'm gonna go right click and I'm gonna say open unit, uh, open selected in unit editor. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that now. And what I wanna do is I wanna go through all the places where I need collision meshes. Okay, so basically the walls, um, I'm grabbing all these walls and I'm grabbing the floor and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the uh, little interior wall that I've got there and this interior wall, okay? So now I've got all the walls selected and what I wanna do is I wanna go right click and I wanna go create physics actor, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna basically say I can now bump into this, okay? Or it can be bumped into, it's now a physics actor, it's, it's acting physically. 
okay? Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the type, notice that I have them all still selected. Um, I'm gonna set the type to box, okay? It just makes it a little bit um, easier. The only one that we don't wanna do that with is this kind of uh, cutout wall because the box will go around the whole thing and we wouldn't be able to get into that little cubby area. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab that, I think it's angled wall, I forget which one it is. Uh, come on, find the selection, there we go. And that is gonna be angled wall, yes, and what I wanna do is I wanna make him a mesh object, okay? So now it'll actually respect the mesh that it's using, okay? So uh, that's really all we have to do for that. Um, and we can now move on uh, to the skylights, okay? Now the skylights, we're not gonna put a physics mesh on, but what we want is the light to stream through the ceiling, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit uh, cast shadows, okay? And by turning off the casting shadows, the skylights now don't cast shadows, which means that they don't block the light from coming in, okay? And that's really all we have to do in here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit file and save, and this asset is pretty much ready to rock. Okay, so let's close that. And now let's do the next step, uh, which is bringing in our next asset. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's go into the garage. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in new folder and we're gonna call this uh, barrel. Okay, and now inside the barrel, I'm gonna have to import the barrel. So let's go back to our goodies folder, assets, and let's grab the 50 gallon drum, game ready and 50 gallon drum. And we're gonna go import, and once we do that, we'll be able to set up this asset. Okay, so let's place that one somewhere. I don't care where, we'll just place them over here someplace. Looks nice. Okay, and let's go into the drum asset. So I just double clicked on that drum asset. I'm now inside the drum asset and let's just take a quick look at what we've got here. Okay, so uh, with this drum asset, what we're gonna wanna do is create him as a static asset. So this is gonna be something that things will bump into, uh, but we're not gonna really do much else with it. It's not gonna be movable. Okay, so with this asset, what we're gonna wanna do is just simply select the collision mesh and create a physics actor on the collision, okay? So this asset has its own collision mesh. It's invisible. If I were to select it and turn on visibility, you would see it in there. As you can see, it's blocking some of that interior uh, stuff. Um, and all this is is kind of like a proxy asset that is just much lower poly to ensure that the physics uh, works well and runs nicely. So it's always a good idea to create a proxy asset that is much lower poly uh, just for collisions, okay? Now we just wanna make sure that this one is set to mesh, okay? Because again, we have that interior space that we wanna be able to get into. If we were to do a box or a capsule or something like that, it would cap off that, that space. And this asset is ready to go. So let's go ahead and hit save and let's close that guy down. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna want is the ability to have something that we can pick up and kind of move around. Um, so let's get that guy imported. Okay, so let's go new, create folder. And for this, we're gonna use a hammer. Okay, so I've got this hammer asset and let's go ahead and get that imported now. Okay, so let's go into the hammer folder and let's go ahead and hit import and let's grab the hammer. Okay, so assets and we're going to grab the hammer and game ready and hammer. Okay, so import. And this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. We're gonna to have to do a couple extra steps, but I've included some really nice goodies inside of the goodies folder that will make it easier for you to do this kind of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click on that hammer and let's get started with the, uh, the main, main brunt of what we have to do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is give it some keys. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into script data, and we're gonna go ahead and hit this plus and string and plus and string. And then what we can do is we can start adding our keys uh, for this asset. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is set a pickup. So pickup, snap. Okay, so there we have pickup and we have snap. Let's set these to yes, and let's set this to yes, okay? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to pick it up. And it's when what pick up means is it's going to pick up the asset and or it's pick upable and we can actually grab it with the, uh, with the controller. And the snap is gonna mean that it can snap to position, okay? So we're gonna snap it into a very specific position, okay? And now what we need to do is go into the unit flow and here it's gonna get a little tricky, but not too bad, okay? So let's jump into that uh, folder that I gave you. So inside of desktop, we can go into this quick uh, this quick start VR, 
and let's go into the goodies folder and let's go into Stingray uh, Flow, okay? So the Flow folder has these three scripts in it, okay? And we're gonna really wanna use all of these, but you can use them individually depending on what you wanna do. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is uh, basically highlight the unit, or actually let's, let's start with the disable physics until touched, okay? So let's double click that, and I just gotta grab some warm text, and now I've got this guy, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and collect, uh, select all, copy the text and right into the flow window we can paste that text okay and it's going to go ahead and give us this nice little dialogue that I've made for us um, and notice that it says set this we're going to need to set this to the mesh actor name okay but notice we don't have a mesh actor yet so what we're going to want to do is grab the collision again and go right click create physics actor okay and once we've done that we can now set this to that collision okay so we're just going to name it collision Okay, C-O-L-L-I-S-I-O-N, and there we have it. And that's really all we have to do for this part, okay? And what this is basically gonna do is it's gonna say, when it's spawned, just set the collision mesh to be non-dynamic, okay? And we haven't even set up the dynamics yet, but we'll do that right now, okay? So let's go ahead and grab this collision, and let's jump into the properties of it. And let's set this one this time, instead of being a static, we're gonna set it to dynamic, okay? And that'll mean that we can pick it up and move it, um, or it can be bumped around, it's, it's living uh, in the world. And the shape template, you can leave it as default, but if you want it to be more accurate, you wanna set it on sweeper, okay? And that'll test in between each frame whether or not it's gone through a wall. So if you were to fling the, 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 the hammer at a wall and it's traveling really fast, by setting it to sweeper, it won't allow it to pass through that wall. If you have it on default, it's possible that, you know, basically one frame, it's in front of the wall, the next frame, it's past the wall. And without the sweeper, it won't test in between those two positions. So therefore, it'll just go, go right through the wall as if the wall wasn't even there. With the sweeper, it'll actually test to see, did I pass through that wall? Yes, I did. Okay, then don't let that happen. And it, it's kind of like testing between frames. You know, you, you want to be careful with using sweepers because there is a cost to using them, okay? Um, basically, processor cycles. Um, so you just want to be a little careful about setting everything to sweepers. You don't want everything in your scene to be a sweeper. Um, only things that are going to be potentially moving very fast. Um, okay, so that's that. So this is basically set up now, so we can go save. And let's go ahead and look at what other goodies I have in that folder, okay? So let's check out this hide controller, okay? So this is gonna be the next thing we wanna do, and I don't know why it's not remembering this, but it isn't, so I don't know what to do about that, but whatever. So now what we're gonna do is gonna go Control A, Control C, and let's paste this into our uh, flow system. And here we're gonna do uh, some pretty cool stuff. What this is gonna do is it's gonna uh, set the position and hide the controller uh, for our, our asset, okay? So let's just take a look at what we have to adjust here. Now, I've done this before, so I kinda know what I wanna set this to, but this is basically your rotation adjustment and this is gonna be your offset. Um, so you can kinda position it in the hand where you want it to fall, okay? So um, for my rotation, I know that I want it to be zero, zero, and negative. 22 degrees on the z-axis and on this one I just want to move it back in the hand a little bit because it could, looks a little weird when it's so far out in front so we're going to go 0 uh, negative 0 0.1 and 0 okay so that's going to give me the vector positioning that I want to have all right um, so that's basically that and the last thing we want to do is grab the next piece out of our uh, little kit of goodies so I don't need to minimize that. I'm gonna grab the, highlight the unit. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to highlight the unit um, based on whether or not the controller is kind of touching it or near it. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste that in here and move that down. And let's just change this stuff to the mesh material name and we have to change our actor name. Okay, so again, this one's gonna be collision. Okay, so that's the actor that's gonna cause this to trigger. And we need to know what material are we gonna be swapping when uh, we touch the highlighted unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and find that out. Let's go to materials. And it's gonna be this name right here. So hammer underscore material. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to the correct material name. Okay, so there is hammer underscore material. And that should pretty much set up this asset for what we need to do. So let's just recap. 
um, what we did. So we have under the properties, we've set the mesh to collision. We wanna set the type to box. We have the shape template of sweeper and it's gonna be a dynamic asset. Okay, so we can save that. And the uh, script data, we went ahead and created two pieces of script data. One is gonna be called the pickup and one is gonna be called the snap. And we want them both set to yes. Um, so yeah, so now one other thing to note, you don't need to do any of this stuff, okay? Like all of this you cannot do. All you really have to do is set this to dynamic and you should be able to pick it up and use it in your level. This stuff just adds some really nice kudos to the, to the project where you're gonna get a highlight and you're gonna get the position of the controller to snap and you're gonna actually hide that controller. Um, and with the, you know, disabling the dynamics, what that's gonna do is if it's a round thing and you don't want it to kind of like roll as soon as the st level starts where it kind of drops and then rolls wherever it wants, um, this will keep it in place until you pick it up and then you'll be able to move it around, okay? So that's what these three things kind of do. Um, and that's really, that's really it, okay? So let's go ahead and save all this because I think we now understand what we've done. Um, so let's go ahead and close that and let's place our hammer in the level. Now we don't really have anything to place the hammer on, so let's go ahead and grab one last asset and we're gonna go create folder and I'm gonna call this the tool chest. Yeah, tool chest. So I'm gonna go into the tool chest, I'm gonna go import, and this is all stuff we've done before, but assets, let's grab the tool chest, game ready, and tool chest assembled, and we're gonna go ahead and hit import, just letting it compile. Okay, great. Let's place that tool chest somewhere over by the barrel just to make it nice and comfortable. And let's move over to our tool chest and let's just make sure we get that thing working. Okay, so we're gonna go open selected unit in unit editor. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing. We're gonna grab the collision. We're gonna create a physics actor and we're going to set it to box and we are pretty much done in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit file and save and we can close this guy down now. All right, so let's close that up and let's put this into position. Let's just kind of get things kind of looking nice. And I'm gonna move this guy over here, why not? Um, and let's put the hammer down. So let's grab the hammer and place the hammer. We can just kind of place them over here and we can rotate it into position if we'd like. And you kind of want to float things a little bit above. Uh, it'll make it a little easier to pick things up. Okay, so that's pretty much set to go. And the last thing that we want to do is just get some light on the subject. So let's just grab our skylight over here. Oops, I'm sticking through the wall. Grab the light and rotate it so that we have some light casting on our assets so it doesn't look so bad. Okay, and eventually I would actually do a light bake, but we're not gonna get into light bakes on this scene. Um, I'm just trying to get you started with VR so that you know kind of how to use uh, the system. All right, so there we have it. Everything should be pretty much set up. Okay, so before we actually give this a play test, I found two little bugs uh, that I wanna just give you a, a heads up on. So let's go into this hammer unit. So open unit in uh, unit editor. And the only thing that I changed was under the unit flow, uh, I forgot that this is actually not going to be pointing to the collision mesh. This is pointing to the hammer itself um, because it's the material slot, okay? So we want to make sure that this is set properly. Um, and I will correct this to be uh, mesh name uh, so that it's not mesh actor name because I kind of goofed that up. Uh, so that's going to be corrected for you. So it'll say mesh name instead of mesh actor name uh, when you do it, okay? So just make sure you set this to uh, the hammer, not to the collision. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and save that and let's close that. And the last thing was on the floor, uh, for some reason I'm getting a little bit of a bug with the floor. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change the floor asset uh, from being a type of box to type of mesh. Okay, so it'll just use the mesh itself. Um, I, I guess I must have had it connected to one of the walls or something so it was much taller and it wasn't allowing me to teleport around. All right, so let's just save that. And that's really it, that's all there was, okay? So we can go ahead and now actually give this a play test. So let's go ahead and do so. I'm gonna put 
on my Vive headset and I'll show you how this all works now. Okay, so I can grab my controller and I have my headset on and you should be able to see this. I will maximize the screen so that you can get a nice view of what I'm seeing. And now I can just teleport around and I can go over to an object like here and I can pick up the hammer and as you can see it disables the controller and I have a hammer in my hand now, okay? And what's really cool is this barrel, so I can toss it into the barrel, I can walk over to it, pick up the hammer again, and even if I were to throw it at an angle, it'll grab that edge and fall in, okay? And one other thing that's pretty cool is, as I was saying, uh, if I were to have not set this to a sweeper, doing something like that would have definitely caused it to, um, to have, oops, I'm running into stuff. Uh, it would have not allowed it to um, go through the wall. So, all right, so that's it. Quick start to VR. Hopefully you learned a bunch. And I hope this was uh, very informative to you. And uh, good luck getting started.